Hello and welcome to the Mastery Transcript Consortium Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer any questions you may have. My name is Jenny and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can either direct it to a specific college or you can ask a question at large. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com mastery. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Ithaca College. Thank you so much, Jenny. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Kowaleski Dietrich. I am the Senior Associate Director for Recruitment Strategy at Ithaca College. Really happy to be with you. If you're connecting from the East Coast as I am, good evening. Let's get started. So Ithaca College is a medium-sized private liberal arts comprehensive college based in central New York State. We are about four hours from New York City, closer to about six hours from both the Pittsburgh and Boston areas. We're medium-sized, so we have approximately 4,600 undergraduate students. That said, our class sizes resemble that of a much smaller institution than we are in reality. Our average class size is only about 20 students, and our student-to-faculty ratio is 11 to 1. Hopefully you can garner from some of these statistics on your screen that our students come from all over the globe. We are predominantly a residential campus and community. Most of our students live on campus. We have about 70 different minors and majors across our five schools, 70s res respectively, excuse me, majors and 70 minors. Those schools being our School of Business, the Park School of Communications, our School of Health Science and Human Performance, our School of Humanities and Sciences, and our founding school, which is our School of Music, Theater, and Dance. And students can go between these schools with ease. So we see many of Ithaca College students wanting to pursue interdisciplinary degrees, major and minor combinations across all of those different fields. And they're able to do so with ease, I would say. We are also big believers that you're going to learn best through hands-on learning opportunities. So internships, fieldwork experiences, undergraduate research, performance opportunities, clinical experience, and the list goes on and on are all a big component and integrated into our students' experiences. We are very proud to offer over 60,000 internship opportunities to our students annually, and those are offered through our Office of Career Exploration and Development. We also have a robust alumni network that we tap into for these opportunities. In addition, we have our own location in London and another domestic location in Los Angeles, as well as 50 plus countries available for study abroad. Being that we are that predominantly residential campus, there's a lot of ways for you to get involved on campus. There are over 200 student organizations and clubs. The best way to describe this, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. And we are located in a top ranked college town. You may be familiar with Ithaca, New York. We share the city of Ithaca with Cornell University, our big partners in the area. So some wonderful and robust multicultural activities, restaurants to take advantage of, festivals, as well as, of course, Ithaca's gorges, and you have the outdoor landscape to take advantage of, too. In terms of our application process, to give you a very high level here, there are a number of application deadlines, and we engage in a very holistic application review. So know that when you're coming from an MTC school, a Mastery Transcript Consortium school, we're going to be looking very specifically at that MTC context, so to speak. So don't even want to put a very numerical GPA on things, but looking at you in the context of the information that's being provided to us by MTC. Please note that all of our applicants are considered for merit-based scholarships. Domestic applicants, permanent residents, and U.S. citizens only need to file the FAFSA to be fully considered for all need-based and merit-based scholarship and grant opportunities. And we do have a financial aid application for those who are not eligible to file the FAFSA. In addition, we've been a test optional college since 2012. We have not required SAT or ACT scores. And again, very much ingrained in holistic review. With that, I'm gonna give you guys a very short glimpse of Ithaca College, so a one minute tour. So I hope you guys enjoy.
Hey, welcome to Ithaca College. We only have a minute to take a tour. Let's go. And of course, we'd want you to come to our campus to take a tour as well. Please note that we host visitors typically six days a week, both virtually and on campus in person. You'll see my email address here on the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to put it into the chat for you all. But at this point, six minutes goes really fast. I'm going to pass it off to one of my colleagues who will be presenting this evening. Thank you again for being here. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And a quick reminder to our participants, you can use that Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to ask questions of any of our institutions here at any time during these presentations. Up next, we have Claremont McKenna College. Great, thank you so much. Uh, apologies to everyone, my camera isn't working anymore, but hopefully I'm able to share some information uh, that will introduce CMC to some of you and hopefully you decide to apply to CMC if that's something um, that aligns with some of your interest. So my name is Stephanie Morales Lopez. I work at Claremont McKenna College, which is located in Claremont, California. We are about 30 miles south of Los Angeles, and we like to say we have a unique location because in one day, students can go surfing to hiking and snowboarding. Uh, CMC was founded in 1946, shortly after World War II. So that meant that there were a number of young men and women who had served our country and were returning home with real world experiences. This was an amazing opportunity for our founders to establish a liberal arts community, a liberal arts college that would marry these two worlds together. So think about the liberal arts, the humanities, the social sciences, the theory, if you will, with that real world practice, that real world experience. And that is exactly what they did in founding Paramount McKenna College. Our founders wanted to educate students to be thoughtful, productive, and responsible leaders in whatever profession they seek to pursue. Here at CMC, there's a strong focus on the practical application of what students are learning inside the classroom. One of our unofficial models is learning for the sake of doing, because again, everything a student is learning and experiencing always goes back to this question of how can I apply this outside of CMC? Academically, we have about 33 majors students can choose from. Some popular majors include government, economics, international relations, and psychology. But we do also have a 3-2 econ engineering program and a philosophy, politics, and economics interdisciplinary major that is modeled after Oxford's own major. Uh, so if we go back to our mission, we want our students to engage in dialogue and discussion, both inside and outside of the classroom. So you'll find that in our community at CMC, diversity of thought is something we value dearly. We embrace dialogue and discussions and our classrooms reflect that. Classroom, uh, classrooms are very discussion based and there's a big focus on sharing and understanding the viewpoints and perspectives of others. Um, in terms of our undergraduate curriculum, we do ask students to take about a third of their courses within their general education requirements. Uh, and then we reserve about a third of their classes for major requirements. And then the remaining third is reserved for their electives. And this is where at CMC, we say we tell students to continue to put that knowledge and put it into practice. And this gives students the opportunities to engage in a couple of different programs. Um, and so one way that students are able to do this is by participating in research. 
So after students have been taking these classes, they questioned and reflected um, and learned a new material. We want to take that, we want them to take that knowledge and again, put it into practice. Students have the opportunity to pursue graduate level research with professors through one of our 11 research institutes and centers. So if you are interested in working on redistricting strategies, then you can work with the Rose Institute for local and state government. Um, if you're interested into diving what, into what leadership means, you can work with the Kravis Leadership Institute. We also have different centers um, and institutes that focus on entrepreneurship and environmental analysis. If you're interested in um, research, about 75% of our students will pursue some type of research opportunity. Along those lines, another pillar, another way that the mission of CMC manifests itself is through our study abroad programs. We have 40% of our students who will pursue some type of study abroad opportunity, but we do have two unique domestic programs that we like to highlight, which are the Washington DC and the Silicon Valley semester programs. Uh, these are semester long, long study programs where students are either within Washington DC or Silicon Valley. Um, so they are full-time students while also holding a full-time internship. Um, so for example, if you're in within the Washington DC program, you might be interning with uh, your Congresswoman, a Senator, um, a law firm, a nonprofit. Um, last semester, we had one of our students intern with the White House. And then if you are participating within the Silicon Valley, you might be interning with Google, Tesla, or startup companies. And like I mentioned, we do want students to register, to be able to graduate within four years. So these students are also taking classes while they're doing these full-time internship programs. Um, another thing that we like to highlight within CMC is our career services, which is called the Sol Center on Campus. Uh, students receive ongoing support. Um, the idea is to help students recognize and cultivate and translate their interests and strengths into meaningful and real world experiences. On average, every CMC student will have at least two summer internships. And one way we support CMC students through that is that we have a summer internship and experience fund where last summer we invested about $2.3 million in offering students um, some funding for unpaid or underpaid internship and experience programs, either abroad or domestic. I will now pass it on to my colleague. Thank you. And if you do have any questions, I will put it in the chat. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Up next, we have Cornish College of the Arts. Hello, my name is Imani Mabu Childress. Uh, I am an admissions counselor at Cornish College of the Arts. I'm also joined by my director, um, Sharon Starling, who will be answering all your questions. We are a performing and visual arts college, and we're the premier performing and visual arts college in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we're located in Seattle, Washington, and we're over 100 years old. So we're one of the few arts colleges in the country where visual and performing artists study together. This is our founder, Natalie Cornish. She's been, uh, she founded our college in 1914. Um, and a lot, many of the teaching artists who followed her uh, believed in innovative education through exposure to the arts. You're on presenter mode. Oh, I am. Do you see, do you see my screen? Yeah, I see the notes. Uh, you see the correct screen now? yep looks good thank you um so our legacy being founded in 1914 um has led to some of the greatest in innovations in the arts um during the earliest 20th century it shaped how much of what we create and how we appreciate work today um, looks like and helped the to put the Pacific Northwest on the map as a thriving arts community. Um, these are a couple of our alumni. 
um, very awarded in uh, dance, music, um, and theater, as well as uh, visual arts. Our first painting faculty, uh, Mark Toby, um, was the first in 59 years since uh, 1900 to win the Venice Biennale um, Painting Award. So along with this, our mission is to provide students aspiring to be practicing artists with an educational program of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures cre creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. At Cornish, you'll be focusing on traditional and interdisciplinary, as well as experimental uh, art forms. Your faculty at Cornish are professional working artists and committed mentors as well. They maintain th thriving careers in their respective fields and all of their industry connections, which provides them with all the knowledge and that skill necessary to train artists of the 21st century. The Cornish community is also dedicated to small businesses, small classes, uh, mentorships, and personalized instruction. With an average class of 13, uh, the faculty to student ratio of seven to one, um, and artists studying at Cornish uh, get the individualized and personal instruction that they need to be the best that they can be. Cornish is an urban campus. We're located in the heart of downtown Seattle, and we're immersed in arts and culture of the city. The city in Seattle is one of the world's epicenters of visual and performing arts, making it an ideal city to pursue your education. Um, it also houses some of the country's best live music, theater, and dance companies, um, and a popular music scene that has garnered a national and international attention, uh, as well as about 20 live theater venues, and Pioneer Square, which is home to one of the country's most prominent art gallery districts. Along with this, Seattle is home to the Fifth Avenue Theater, Seattle International Film Festival, Seattle Art Museum, and the Upstream and Bumbershoot Music Festivals, to name a few. Essentially, we are a thriving professional community uh, for, professional, for practicing artists and designers, um, and Cornish has been at the forefront of the creative, Seattle creative scene uh, for more than 100 years. Uh, with being that, that epicenter, um, it makes it an ideal city for you to pursue your act artistic uh, education. Uh, along with being that epicenter, we are surrounded by creative agencies, architecture and design firms, um, and many nonprofits where uh, artists are uh, within walking distance of all these creative spaces that help them create um, and add to the culture. Uh, our exact location is in South Lake Union, um, which uh, is home to a host of many uh, creative as well as design and tech communities. Um, and you'll find them making bold work throughout the community. Uh, students at Cornish have access to a variety of state-of-the-art performance and uh, um, arts creative spaces um, that are us usable by any discipline, regardless of what your major is. We also house our students um, from 38 states and 18 countries, um, and many of them choose to live in our, our halls. Um, I lived there for three years as an alum. So our degrees offered are animation, illustration, uh, game art, film, and interaction design, interior architecture. We offer BFAs in those. We also offer BFAs in dance, musical theater, acting, original works, and theatrical design and technology, which we call performance production, and a Bachelor of Music. For this, we ask for a audition and portfolio. That's our um, biggest part of our um, selection process, but we look at your application holistically um, to get a better sense of who you are as an artist, um, citizen, and innovator, as a student, and this pairs well with the, um, tra the transcript style that you use through StriveScan. Our dates and deadlines are uh, August 1st is when the application opens. Our early action deadline is December 1st. And our priority deadlines are for February 15th. Um, and those are rolling uh, decisions after February 15th. 
we also have a summer program for those that are not um, out of high school yet. And uh, if you would like to get in contact with us, this is our uh, info. I will now pass it on to my colleague who is next. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And a quick reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function if you do have questions at any time for our presenters. Up next, we have Vanderbilt University. Hello, and I hope everyone is having a good evening so far. I'm enjoying hearing about all these colleges because I have a high school senior myself, so I'm kind of taking notes in the background. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Maria Elena Ornelas. I'm one of the associate directors at Vanderbilt University, uh, an alum myself. And one of the exciting things about Vanderbilt is that we have a little bit of different qualities uh, on our campus to offer our students. First of all, we're a medium-sized campus located in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee, um, and we really focus on this idea of an interdisciplinary um, campus. So you'll find that through our 10 colleges and schools, four of which we'll talk a little bit about today, you have access to a variety of different academic programs. You'll see here about 70 different majors, um, but you also have a really engaged campus, and hopefully you get a sense of that today. We also pride ourselves on our inclusive student body, and we included a variety of different figures here as well, um, with about 47.6% of our students identifying as students of color. Uh, we have another 10% of our students coming from international locations. Um, and we are very proud of the fact that we almost always have 50 states represented, uh, as well as about 73 different countries represented this year. And one of the most exciting things is that about 65% of our students are receiving some type of financial assistance to come and attend Vanderbilt. Um, but back to this concept of uh, one Vanderbilt, it's allowing our students to access all four undergraduate schools during their baccalaureate experience with us. So while one of the undergraduate schools is how they would apply to Vanderbilt, they really do get access through interdisciplinary academic programs, double majoring, minoring, and really accessing a variety of different academic and research options. We really encourage students to think about open borders within our university. Um, so some hallmarks include the fact that we really also believe in immersive opportunities, as you'll hear about as well. And we also encourage our students to have opportunities when it comes to really getting to know their faculty members in more um, immersive opportunities, such as research, internships, and things of that nature as well. It's also not uncommon to hear our faculty members uh, take our students under their wing as uh, mentees, in addition to, of course, acting as full-time advisors to our students uh, going through their academic programs too. With that in mind, when it comes to this idea of immersion, Immersion Vanderbilt has really allowed our students to access opportunities that really have become a little bit more um, finer tuned, allowing our students to access, um, yes, some of the more traditional programs like studying abroad, research and internships, but also other aspects like civic engagement, uh, creative discovery, innovation and entrepreneurship as well, and really having more um, hands-on opportunities during their four-year experience earning their bachelor's degree and being able to have that available on their transcript as they then go into the uh, full-time employment positions, uh, going and applying to internships as well, um, and making a very competitive application for those opportunities. Likewise, uh, we also encourage students to really help us broaden our perspectives when it comes to research. So yes, STEM definitely gets a lot of clamor on our campus, having a world-class medical research facility on our campus. Uh, but we can't forget that out of our 120 centers of research, we also have some amazing humanities research facilities on our campus, as well as three national centers of education research on our campus as well. In addition, we also want to make sure that our students are really engaging with the campus life. So you'll kind of see some really fun figures here. We are part of the uh, Southeastern Conference Division I Varsity Athletics. Uh, we also want to make sure that all of our students are finding their community, their home during their four years. And so a variety of our um, identity centers and student affairs um, um, centers on campus really help us hone in on this idea of finding that space, um, whether it's a physical space on campus or identity groups and affinity groups on campus as well. 
And of course, being able to showcase those, um, a variety of different showcases, uh, fine arts groups, um, having some pre-professional opportunities, presenting at conferences, for example, and really, again, being able to hone in on a very strong portfolio by the time that they are graduating uh, from our campus. And then, of course, one of the things I'm most proud of as a, a full-time admissions officer and alum of Vanderbilt is the fact that through Opportunity Vanderbilt, we are making it a, more affordable than ever for our students to graduate from Vanderbilt with as little debt as possible and being able to really have um, much of a full-fledged experience while making sure that every single one of our opportunities are available to our students. As you'll see here, we are in the blind admissions process, um, and this is open to all of our U.S. citizens as well as our eligible non-citizens, including our undocumented students. We also, through all of our citizenships, including our international students, we commit to meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need for our admitted students. And we meet that need with no loans. So our financial aid packages are 97% um, grants assistance and 3% work expectation. So lots of different opportunities to make sure that we are an affordable option for all of our students. Um, one thing not highlighted here is our admissions process. I wanted to make sure to hone in on that just a little bit, where we are also operating on a holistic admissions process, and we are also test optional through at least the class of 2024. Uh, we have not yet made that decision on the class of 2025 just yet, but we hope to make that decision shortly. Um, and through our students that are pursuing a mastery transcript, we do wanna make sure uh, that we are, again, reading holistically with that context in mind. With that, I will make sure to uh, provide my contact information in the chat, so that way we can make sure to keep in touch, and we hope that you do. Perfect, thank you so much, we really appreciate it. If you do have questions for any of these admissions officers, put them in the Q&A, uh, reach out to them via their contact info in the chat as well. They're more than happy to hear from you. Up next tonight, we have UT Austin. Hey y'all, welcome. Uh, my name is Amanda and tonight I'm gonna be sharing with you about the wonderful institution of the University of Texas at Austin. Um, there is a QR code in the first couple of slides. So if you can just scan that for me to say that um, you interacted with us tonight and want to be put on our um, newsletter, that'd be awesome. So we are in a community of scholars. You are going to be with 51,000 strong, but 40,000 of those are undergraduates. And so we try to make 60% of your classes, 30 people or fewer, and the student to teacher ratio 18 to 1. We are the number one public university in the state of Texas, number nine public universities in the country, and number 36 in the world. So anything that you do at the University of Texas at Austin will be highly accredited and world renowned. Um, let's talk about some of your interests. So we have over 170 fields of study, 13 colleges, and 12,400 plus courses offered. You can take anything from the Taylor Swift Lyricism course to the Beyonce Music History course to the Law Ethics Physics course. Anything that you can dream of, we more than likely have it. You can put a pre-med or pre-law track onto any degree at the university so you can still study what you want while also preparing for law, med school, or dental or vet school. We have those options for you as well. We are currently the nation's largest undergraduate research institution. We have Nobel Prize winners, Rhodes Scholars, um, 1,000 plus patents pending. And so um, when we say what starts here changes the world, we really do mean that. Um, and so you'll have plenty of opportunities to do things of that nature as well. Um, making an impact, we have over 1,200 organizations on campus. So with that, um, there's intramurals, there's club sports, there's Greek life, there's uh, political activism, there's the student farmer's market, anything you can think of in between, we more than likely have it. If not, you can start your own club by getting a few friends, you each pay a few bucks, and then you get a university sponsor as well. Um, we also do have a multicultural center and a center for gender and sexuality as well. Um, so student voices are heard all around the campus and that we have that inclusivity. Um, for education abroad, we have a partnership with over 100 countries. Um, and over $1 million in scholarships given every year um, to Longhorns that go abroad. You can do two weeks, six weeks, a academic semester or an academic school year. The choice is yours and what your degree plan is up to. Um, you can have an internship at the, at the University for Education Abroad, or you can do classes, or you can do both. It just depends on what your degree plan offers. 
So Austin is the number one boomtown for the next decade. Young professionals are flocking to the area because it has so much opportunity. Google, Apple, and Tesla are all out in Austin. It is the live music capital of the world containing Austin city limits and South by Southwest. Um, so there's so much to do as far as being an Austinite and being involved. Um, there's a lot of acceptance. It's very much a big melting pot of a city. Um, and so it's a really great place to be. 55% of our students, when you apply, receive some form of financial aid. And so your application to the university is also your scholarship application. So you will be considered for need-based, merit-based, and academic-based scholarships when you apply. So how do you join the Longhorn family? There's a couple of important dates here for you. August 1st, the application has already opened. These FAFSA dates are changing. The FAFSA we think will open sometime in mid-December or early January. Um, November 1st, that's coming up the priority deadline. If you apply before on November 1st, then you will find out the following February what the decision is. If you apply before on December 1st, you'll find out the following March what the decision is. It does not help your chances. It is not early action. There are no rolling admissions either. Um, it just solely helps you find out a month sooner what the decision is so you can start making plans. The, um, the package as well for your awards, like scholarships, grants, and things like that, um, that will not be awarded at the same time. So when you do receive your admittance and you don't see that in your My Status portal, um, which we'll talk about here in a second, then that's okay. That'll take a little bit more time to get. Okay, you can apply through Common App or apply Texas, and you need to be checking your My Status every day once you submit your application because it'll give you different notifications about what the university could need from you, such as different um, documents, different scholarships that they think that you could be a good applicant for or anything else. Here's the application checklist. Um, it's a $75 application fee the application itself, the essay and three short answers, the different transcripts that you can use and major specific requirements, um, such as an audition for our fine arts majors, an extra question for nursing, architecture, and radio, television, film, and just different majors like that. Um, the optional items are an expanded resume if you want to do that. Letters of recommendation, you can have up to two, and they can be from anyone as long as they're not from family. We are test optional this year, and so um, if you want to send your test score, it's truly up to you if you want to send it, um, but if not, we're totally fine with that too. Here are some numbers that you can write down. The Office of Admissions is up top, and if you're in the Houston Center specifically, um, you can contact our office, or maybe you're in Dallas or the Valley and you need those as well, but those are options for you to have too. Um, here is my personal information for the University of Texas at Austin. You can contact me personally and we can email about questions. Email is going to be the best way to get a hold of me. I typically will answer within 48 hours, um, but if I have an away message up, it can take me longer, but just know that I try to get back to you within 48 hours. Um, if you need to feel like you need to meet or anything like that, um, we can always make an appointment to meet as well. And so we would do that virtually and we would just coordinate our schedules to do so. So if you're ready to start changing the world, you can go to admissions.utexas.edu uh, and you can look at our admission process today with all the application materials and anything else you may need to get started. And that is it for the University of Texas at Austin. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our presenters here today uh, for letting us know more about your institutions. We have some time for some Q&A, so um, I'll ask all that are able to turn on their videos if you could um, turn on your video and we'll get started with that Q&A. Um, so our first question for the evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So you see many students going through this process uh, day in and day out. What is some advice that you would give these students and little nuggets of wisdom you can share for our students here today? We'll go in the same order, um, starting with uh, Ithaca College. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I would I would simply advise keeping an open mind. Frankly, what you want today is likely to evolve from now to when you apply to college, to when you're admitted to said colleges, to when you enroll in said colleges, and ultimately to when you graduate. And so, you know, things are going to change. And so, um, frankly, what you think you may want one day is going to change from one to the next. And so I would say keeping an open mind, super important through this process as you continue to navigate it. So uh, accept those changes and, and listen to your instincts as you're going through it. I, hi everyone. I would probably share with students too, 
um, really think about their own high school experience and what they've needed or have helped them be successful within those four years and think, of, and think about how they can translate that into college. Because at the end of the day, they should be supported academically, financially, um, emotionally, and all the ways that they need to when they're in college as well. So really thinking about what they need to be successful. Looks like our rep from Cornish may have uh, disconnected from the call. Sharon, are you? Uh, you know what, I'm here. Ahead? I'm. I am remote with a very bad internet connection, and I missed the question, but I would be glad to answer it. Sure. Oh, what you advice could... would you give someone going through the college search process? Oh, I think I would echo my colleagues. Be open. You don't have to make the choice at this point. I support having a wide range of colleges on your application list, and I would not be afraid to apply to art school if you love your artistic and creative practice. Um, so again, outing myself as a high school senior parent here, um, it can be a stressful time um, as we are experiencing in my household. Um, but we also recognize that my daughter has a village around her in a variety of different ways. Um, you have your high school counselor, you have your teachers, you have your peers, you have obviously admissions counselors that are available to help. That's why we're in the roles that we are. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask for assistance, whether it's those questions that you think might be silly or, you know, whether it's the fact that you just want that one extra person to look over that essay. Um, that's kind of what we're here for. And we're more than happy to offer that assistance. I would really say just be the best version of yourself. Um, and as long as you're the best version of yourself, then the right college will find you and you'll find and you'll find them. Right. I would echo my colleagues in saying that you do need to be open, have an array of you know, different schools and universities that you want to look at. So that way you're not, um, you know, just one college set on that. And then, you know, if something happens, then, you know, it's the end of the world. So I would really make sure that you're set in an array of colleges, be open because you never know. There's so many good possibilities at so many different schools. And so just to be your best version of yourself and that will find itself to you. That is all great advice. I always like to add into this one as well um, is to stay organized. You just heard so many different dates and deadlines, uh, scholarship deadlines, early action, all these different things going on. So keep a spreadsheet if that's, you know, the thing, or if you want to keep like tab in a notebook for each school, some way to stay organized um, that will help lessen hopefully some of that stress uh, in that process. Um, but also make sure that you don't miss out on like money <laughs> and things going on on campus. So um, stay organized if you have a dedicated email for this process as well, hopefully professional sounding email uh, that you can use in the process to keep everything so that you're like, spam or, you know, coupons aren't coming in all the same time um, with like important decisions and deadlines. Um, I always like to add that in. And I know um, Maria mentioned about the stressful process. And I've also heard something that I really is just to like take a step back if you need it. As long as it's not like the last day you have to make a decision, take the weekend off, tell your parents and friends you don't want to talk about college at all and just kind of take a step back, take a breather. And like, maybe that'll help, you know, you come back at things with like fresh eyes and fresh mind later. So um, it'll all be okay. None of this is the end of the world. I know, like Amanda said, it can feel like that. None of it is. <laughs> um, you will find a place that works for you. You can change schools. You can change majors. Um, you know, doing this, I hear a lot of advice. So I'm <laughs> mentioning a lot of it, but because it can be a really stressful time. <laughs> um, all right. So we have time for more questions. So our next question for the evening is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I know six minutes is not a lot. So what's that fun kind of fact or something that you really want to stand out um, as we are closing out our evening together? Um, so we'll go ahead in that same order. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Um, I love to paraphrase, frankly, and one of the professors on Ithaca's campus, who's, I shouldn't pay, play favorites, but one of my favorites, but she used to always say that um, you're going to look at many schools and they're going to have beautiful campuses. They're going to have top ranked programs. They're going to have all of these things that, that check off these boxes on your list. 
but what's going to matter at the end of the day more than anything else are the people that you engage with. They are the people who are going to be the ones who connect you to resources. They're going to connect you to professionals. They're going to connect you to internships. They're going to connect you to all of these things, but they're also going to be the lasting presences in your life. So pay attention to the people who you're connecting with while you're in the admission process, because it matters. It matters and it's going to have that lasting impact beyond that degree, beyond all of those things. Those people will be presences in your life moving forward. And I think that they're there at Ithaca. It's kept me there for 13 years. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but the question, um, can you repeat the question one more time, Jenny? I apologize. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? So if you okay. want to hear a little more, I know your PowerPoint also didn't pull up. So if you have a slide or two you wanted to show um, to hit on that too, you can. Absolutely. Thank you again. Um, let me try to share this really quickly. And Sharon, if you want to share about uh, Cornish College, one thing we want to remember while Stephanie's bringing that yeah, up. I, I can absolutely do that. Um, one of the things that I like to point out is you know, many of my colleagues here, there is a school of music, there are film studies, there's a school of art, but you're inside a, a more generalized liberal arts or comprehensive university. And I think what's interesting about Cornish is that you're a film student inside an art school. So your classmates are all creatives. You've got set designers, you've got costume designers, you've got composers, you've got choreographers, they're all right there with you and they're excited to collaborate and cross pollinate among the programs. So I think it's an interesting way to look at it. You know, it's a school of music inside an art school, school of art inside an art school so that all of your classmates really understand the passion and the focus and the concentration, you know, where you know, it's a place where you make art six to eight hours every day, and then you eat dinner and go back to the studio. Thank you. We can hop back over to Stephanie, too. Yes, thank you. Okay, can everyone see the CMC yes. Athenaeum yeah. slide? Perfect. Um, so one thing I didn't mention earlier was the Athenaeum, and this is the heart of the CMC community. Uh, it's where we invite guest speakers from all over the country into our dining space to give a presentation on their field of expertise, and then they engage in a Q&A session with our CMC students and community members. And given our size, students often think that it happens probably a couple of times a semester, but it happens every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening. And so in the past, we've had Condoleezza Rice come into our dining space, to Mitt Romney, to musicians, authors, um, psychologists, researchers. So it's a really great um, place in the CMC community if you're interested in engaging in that outside of the classroom as well. Thank you. All right. Up next. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I would say as a takeaway for my institution is that I am finding that we have so many hidden gem majors on our campus. And every day when I'm talking with either professors or I'm talking with students that have visited our campus and have talked with either students or faculty members themselves, I'm learning about more of the programs that I kind of wish I could go back to college and take myself. Um, anthropology major, so you know, no regrets or anything. But on the same token, I'm like, oh, I could have been a double major or a triple major in that. Um, so definitely something that I would highly recommend. Dig a little deeper into some of the profiles, um, both for my campus, but also other campuses. So again, that open mind piece uh, about some of the programs that you might not think about or not know about uh, when you're first looking at a campus. Um, so I would say with us, one of the things that I value the most is we have this thing called Speedway at UT Austin, and it's literally this yellow brick road. 
um, that's in the middle of campus where you can walk and you just see all the different buildings and things like that. And one of the things I love is just the diversity of our student body. You can have the student farmers market next to political activism group, next to a spirit group, and everyone looks completely different. You have people from different religious backgrounds working together. You have people that look like me, um, people that look like my husband who is um, predominantly Latinx. You have a lot of different people just working together. We have gotten the Excellence in Diversity Award twice in the last 10 years, and it's only given to 60 campuses across the country. And it's something that we do really value a lot um, within our student body. And so um, just know that at Texas, you have a voice, you have a space for you, um, and you will be, you know, represented and heard on our university. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our presenters this evening. Like Maria was saying, there's so many majors I wish I could go back and do and so many schools I wish I could go back and, uh, you know, at least visit, if not go to. They're all amazing. So please reach out to all of these admissions reps and uh, learn more about their institutions. Ask any questions that we weren't able to get to tonight um, because we really do, you know, want you to reach out and get those questions answered and um, feel that hurt, feel heard and valued in that process because you are. Um, so thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we really appreciate you being here and taking this time. Um, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of tonight's recordings at strivescan.com slash mastery. That's strivescan.com slash mastery. Thanks again for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, have a wonderful evening and best of luck on your college search process. <laughs>